It's cold. You got 15 minutes, preacher. Uh, and I would tell you that time is relative. Cons <laughs> if you put my sermon length next to eternity, I'm always sure. <laughs> always sure. But let's pray together and we're going to sing together. And um, Lord willing, our hearts to be prepared to worship together this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we do give thanks for your grace and for your mercy. Father, we give thanks for the empty tomb. God, we praise you for the blood that was shed on Calvary for propitiation of our sins. Jesus did what we could not do and the hopeless became hopeful. God, I pray that you would resonate your truth in every heart this morning. Lord, that it would penetrate through our thick necks and make it into our hearts. Father, whether we've heard the gospel our entire lives or we're hearing it for the first time this morning, Lord, I pray it would change us. God, I pray like the psalmist prayed that you would put a new song in our heart this morning. Father, I've seen the songs that we're singing. I know them. And yet this morning, Lord, I want to sing them anew like, like the truth that we're singing really makes a difference in our lives. God, I pray for the food that is being prepared. I pray that you would bless those that are in the kitchen. God, I pray as we eat together and we sit around the tables together that we would have real fellowship. And God, that we would celebrate the risen Savior. Lord, I pray for the music that's going to be done by our choir. God, that you would bless their hard work. And Lord, again, that, that you would be glorified above all things. You are good, Lord, and you do good. Will you please teach us your ways? And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's end together. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life, glory to His name. On verse 4. Cast up for soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to His name. Back to the chorus. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of life. everyone's excited to be here this morning let's uh, continue to worship this morning Jesus Messiah he became sin who knew no sin we might become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so Love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, my blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. from heaven Oh Jesus Messiah Lord of all His body the bread His body the bread His blood the wine Broken and poured out Oh, 
and the veil was torn. Love so amazing. Love so you have your Bibles this morning, find the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. in here somewhere it's in the New Testament isn't it I don't know where I got 1 Corinthians 57 from but uh, anyways this morning oh me I love going after Ben Ben's the only person that I go after that I ever got a raise to the actual stand the uh Easter morning is, uh, is a special morning for all of us as believers. It ought to be celebrated every day of our life, not just once a year. But it is exciting. It's a time for families to spend time together. And uh, I, uh, I had really planned, I was sharing with Ben just a while ago, I, I had planned to uh, talk about Mary Magdalene and Mary. I was going to preach this morning from Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 12 because the truth that, that what happens in a lot of our lives is exactly what happened to Mary, both Marys, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. They came to the tomb with spices to take care of a dead body and Jesus had told them that on the third day he would what? Rise again. That is the hope over, over sin and the, and the victory over death. And yet when they came, they did not come expecting to see the tomb empty. They came expecting to see a, a body, and they were going to take care of it. And, and that was going to be my message this morning is, is we, we tend to, even as believers, look for life among dead things. 
uh, you know, we, we may think if I can just accomplish this task or if I can just make this goal or, but we constantly find ourselves looking for life and things that really, if it brings a little life, it's only for a short time. It's never lasting. It never carries on and carries on like only can be found in the joy and in the life of Christ. And then I got a phone call on Friday from Henry Maddox at Hicks Funeral Home. This is this Friday, two days ago. And uh, he said, Brother Kenny, can you help a, a guy out? Um, his mother's from Elberton, and she's passed away. Uh, they, they, he doesn't live here. He's in the Air Force. He's stationed in Illinois, and they need somebody to do her funeral. And I was like, well, yeah, bro. I mean, I would be glad to help. When is it? He said, oh, tomorrow at 2. And I was like, wow. You know, um, to be quite honest with you, we, Hunter's home, and and we knew Ty wasn't going to be with us today. He went to, to the Easter sunrise service in Washington, D.C. And, and uh, so uh, we had made some plans to go and do some things. Um, but but I, I just wanted to serve the Lord. And so I told Henry, yeah, I'll do it. I, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. And always nervous about preaching a funeral. It's really nervous to preach a funeral of, no, of somebody that you do not know. It's not just nerve-wracking. It can be overwhelming. And I said, Henry, I said, yeah, give me my number and tell him to call me. And, and I hung up with Henry, and like 10 minutes later, the phone rings, and, and, he, and it's, 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 his name's Chris. He, he calls, and, and he was like, man, I just want to tell you thank you for, uh, you know, preaching and, and being available. And I was like, man, I, and we started talking. And the more he talked, the, the more just a peace set in that, that this was right. This is what I was supposed to do. And, and not only was it uh, right, I was excited. You know my heart towards the military. Uh, this guy is a career Air Force guy. His father served in the Air Force. And, and, and it, it made it special uh, to be a part of it. And, and if you remember how these days have gone, who thought that in this late in April we'd be seeing our breath on a Sunday morning? Amen. But just praise the Lord that we aren't celebrating on Saturday. It could have been a lot worse. Or Friday trying to do this, right? I mean, but it really is fitting. You had, you had I don't know why we call it Good Friday, um, because it, it, it was the death of our Savior. I know, I know the good that is in it, but it was a dark day. But then yesterday, as Ben and I were talking, just the wind and the rain. And as I pulled into the cemetery, there was, there was a family huddled under a tent rain coming down, wind blowing the rain sideways under the tent, and I get there, and, and, and it, was, it, was, it was really just, just a God thing. Changed the whole message. As I stepped there, and I met some of the, some of the family, and I started greeting them, and they started sharing with me, and uh, Chris, the, his, her son was there. Uh, you know, he, he was fighting back the tears. He loved his mom. Uh, he, he is, he'll be retiring from the Air Force in a few years, and, and it was an honor for me to serve their family. Uh, but his mom ha had wanted to move back close to home, and so she moved to Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, she was from Elberton. She met a man in Athens. He was in the military, and so they traveled around. And, but she wanted to come back home, and, and then her, she got to where she couldn't breathe very well, so he moved mom in. He was stationed in Illinois, and so he moved mom in to Illinois. But while she was in Aiken, South Carolina, uh, she grew up in the church, and she met a lady in Aiken, South Carolina. And while she was in Aiken, this lady would take her to church, and, and, and she would repeat these words. Listen to what she would say. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. And this lady that she had met and become friends with in Aiken would tell her the truth of the gospel. You will not go to heaven by being a good person. And the lady gave her life to Christ. And while the rain is coming down, the wind is blowing it sideways, we're at a cemetery, there's joy under the tent that only Christ can bring. Why? Because there was a peace that passes all understanding. Listen, we all have struggles. As I was watching people come in from the parking lot, there, there's probably 150, 160 people out here, and, and we've learned how to wear masks. We've learned how to dress up. We've learned how to go through life. But there's many struggles that are sitting within the, the seats out here this morning. And I would say to you, there's only one way to have joy through that struggle, and that is to know Christ as your personal Savior. 
It was a blessing as I stood there. I was thinking, uh, you know, Mary, Mary and, and, and them were coming, but, but man, how precious is this? There's no way a family can be huddled at a funeral with the rain coming down, the wind blowing it sideways. I'm talking about I'm standing there, I keep trying to scoot under, and it's dripping down the back of my coat. And, and, it's, and I'm thinking, man, we're just having a wonderful time celebrating the life. Why? Because here's the truth. The greatest gift that you can ever give your family is for them to know where you'll spend eternity. That is the greatest gift you can give your family. Is if I was preaching your funeral, there would be no doubt about you, just as there was no doubt about her, of where she'll spend eternity or where you'll spend eternity. And as I was, as I was preaching that, the Lord just started stirring my heart and, and changing and shifting, and I, and I just kept running to this 1 Corinthians 15, and, and, and I just... We learn from Sunday school. We've learned these truths. We've, we've learned obedience from Joshua. We've learned courage from Daniel. We've learned patience from Job. We've learned perseverance. And, and we've learned just to hold on to commitment as Nehemiah rebuilt the wall. We've learned faithfulness from people like Elijah. But those, the, those Bible characters that we still gain hope from today, it, it, is, it is not as if it was just for them in that time. It is for you and I today in this time. And that, that victory and that, and, and that strength and that faith and that hope comes only from Christ. And as we stand this morning, if you're physically able, if you'll turn your notes over, I want us to read together uh, the truth of the Scripture, and then we'll jump into the message. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 58. I don't know why I said 5, but anyways, we're there. Yes. Look at that sun peeking through right now. Though. I love being out here. Let's see, here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 58. Anybody hear any turkeys gobbling this morning? I, I've, been, I've done been asked by five people, you remember that year when you said explosion and somebody shot? Yes, I remember it. Every Sunday that we do this. Let's read this together. Now I say this, brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, apparently, uh, did I say together in another language? Uh, together means you're going to read with me. Not along in your mind, we're going to read out loud. Act, uh, look, let's, I know it's cold, but look, let's act like, look, there's people that are driving up and down the road. And, and, and if, if, if I were driving down the road as a lost person, I looked over at some of the faces in this crowd, I would go, why do they do it? <laughs> why do they just stay in bed? Listen. We are celebrating our hope of return. Do you know before the cross and before the grave, you and I were destined for hell with no hope? But because of the cross and because of the grave and because of it being empty, you and I can live eternally with God in heaven. And that ought to make the believer say, Amen. Listen, let's read this together. Verse 50. Now I say this, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. Verse 53, for this perishable must put on the imperishable, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when the perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written. Say this with, with, with excitement. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain. And all God's people said, Amen. Be seated this morning. I, <laughs> oh, me. I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am. Look, I, we, we, we have to wake up, church. We have to wake up. I spent plenty of Friday nights in the Granite Bowl, a lot colder than this. And I've never heard one person sit beside me going, man, I wish this game was over. 
Well, I did when we had one coach. <laughs> but uh, look, I, if we can sit through the cold in a football game, we can sit through the cold through a sermon. Amen? Let's, uh, man, I, I tell you what, just hook arms with the person sitting next to you. Let's, let's pray in corporate and we'll, I, I, we'll, go, we'll, get, we'll get through this. Y'all, y'all repeat this after me. Let's just, let's just pray together. Dear God, help us. You said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. God, give us strength, courage. Have your way in us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Look, he gives us victory over death. Jesus has given those who believe in him absolute victory over death absolute victory over death. I don't know if you watched the Braves yesterday. They got whooped in the first game. We were getting whooped in the second game. And we were watching, uh, some, other, we were watching some college baseball, and, and Hunter said, oh, they're coming back. And I was like, well, I thought the game was over. Chris said they lost. And so we flipped it over to the Braves game just to watch them tie it up, then take the lead, and then win. And we were like, yeah. You know, I mean, you better get used to celebrating the Braves win this year. We went, we won like seven in a row, and then it looked like we were going to go on a losing streak of about 15. But, but we, well, they won last night, and it was exciting. So when we talk about this victory, it isn't an I hope so hope. This is an I know so hope. I, I know this is going to take place because of Christ's shed blood, because of the empty tomb. Listen, we have victory over death as believers. You and I need to celebrate that every day of our life. When I'm struggling with something, I need to remember this is temporary. My eternity is with Him. My home is not really here. I read a story of a little boy that crawled up into his mom's lap on a hot summer day, and they were out on the porch, and they were rocking. And, and as, as he was just laying up against his mom, rocking in the chair, the, uh, the little boy just started, she, the mom could feel him squeezing in on her and just, just getting closer and closer. And she's like, what are you getting so antsy for? Why are you just squeezing in on me? And, she, and, he, and he pointed, and, he, and there was a bee on the, on the rocking chair. And, and he said, Mama, there's a bee. And she said, oh, honey, she said, you don't have to worry about that bee. She said, oh, it'll sting me. He says, no, look right here. She said, the bee's already stung me. She said, I've got a stinger right here. He can't sting you anymore. Listen, what Jesus did on the cross was take the sting out of death for you and I that would place our life in Him. The sting of death is gone. The sting of sin is gone because of what Christ Jesus did. You and I can live this temporary life with a hope of what Christ has done for us. And in Him and through Him, we will spend eternity with the Lord. Death is one of the greatest fears known to man. But in Christ, it is something that you and I do not have to fear. It's something we don't want to talk about. It's something we don't want to think about. I'm, I'm only 48 years old. And I say only because I need to remember my, my, remind my children of that. I, I mean, I, today I got up, I usually wear like a light color jacket, like the one Sam's got on back there in the back. And I don't hardly ever wear blue. And so I was worried about just uh, matching. And, and so I, I come out and I was like, Hunter, do you think this goes together? He goes, yeah, it matches. You're just still old, Dad. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> My Achilles fell off playing basketball, tore in two. I'm on the ground. Felt like somebody kicked me, and I stood up, and I said, or I didn't stand up. I laid on the floor, and I'm looking around. I said, Hunter, who tripped me? He said, Dad, nobody was around you. You're old. Get up. I'm 48 years old. Death is going to come one day. I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm telling you, I don't fear it because I know I, love, I used to love it when Pastor Gary would say at funerals, and it, and it just resonated in my heart when he would say this. I know for a fact that the day that I close my eyes on this temporary earth, I'm going to open them in the presence of my Savior. Listen, I don't fear death. I'm not looking forward to it. I want to see my boys marry. I, I want to experience grandchildren someday in the far, far future. But I don't, I, 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 we don't want to talk about it. Even as believers, we don't want to talk about it. But listen, as, as believers, death is merely a doorway into eternal life. But for the lost, it is a doorway into eternal separation from God. For the believer in Christ and what he did on the cross, a doorway into eternity with God. For the lost, 
it is a doorway into eternal separation from God. It is important that we celebrate Easter. It's important that we talk about Easter because what we have our hope in. First Peter says that you're to be in, prepared in season and out of season to give an account for the joy that is inside of you. Man, why are you so happy? The things that are going on in your life are terrible. It's, you're struggling and you're, listen, I, I, I have a joy because even though this is not a happy time in my life, listen, I know where I'm going to spend eternity. This is not my home. I have hope in a place that God has prepared for me. He doesn't just give us victory over death. He gives us victory over deception. You know, we were deceived by the enemy in the garden. Uh, and and that's, that's exactly what took place. Adam and Eve were deceived by the enemy. They got the, he got them to doubt God's word. And when we doubt God's word, he's able to deceive us from living truth. And, and praise the Lord that Jesus came to give us victory over that deception. You know, Paul mentions the problem of sin. Look at verse 56 again with me in the text, or if you want to flip your notes over. But listen, in verse 56 of, of chapter 15, it says, The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. What is he saying? The, the, the death came into this world when Adam and Eve sinned. The Bible says in Romans that sin entered the world through one man, and it's been passed on from generation to generation. That as sin came into the world, so did death. Not just for mankind, it changed everything. The psalmist wrote that the, the earth cries out for Jesus' return. You know when Jesus comes back, Roundup will be out of business? You know there weren't weeds before sin. The earth changed. Man changed when Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And this problem of sin, I, 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 these truths, we don't have time this morning to run through them. Uh, they're in your notes, and I would, I, would, I would encourage you to read the Scriptures. Sin demands our judgment. I met a, a Muslim uh, guy. Uh, I've never talked to a Muslim before. Um, and, and my heart broke. Not, not just... I'll be quite honest with you. I didn't really even want to talk to this guy because I struggle still with 9-11. I, I watched Pearl Harbor, and I was mad at Japanese people for a long time after watching that movie. I mean, it affected me in a great way. I had to, I had to confess to the Lord. But as I, as I talked with this Muslim, or as they say Muslim, he, he kept talking about if you do wrong in their faith, that you just do right and God may or may not accept that right that equal out what you did wrong. And, and I thought to myself, I said, man, that, that, just, sound, that just doesn't sound right. I, and I asked him, I said, okay, how, how does, how, okay, if, if he does wrong, if I do wrong and then I do good, the wrong he can't sweep under the rug because even though God is full of grace and full of mercy, if he's just and he's righteous, there has to be a penalty for the wrong that has been done. He just can't overlook it. I said, that's why in our faith we have hope in Christ is because God is just and righteous. Yes, he's full of grace and he's full of mercy, but he had to punish the sin. And you and I were not worthy of what needed to take place. That's why Christ came. His sin, our sin, not his sin, our sin was placed upon him. We were judged in him and through him. And it's his blood that was shed that gives us hope over victory, over death. Our sin demanded a judgment. Romans 6.23 tells us the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. Not just the I stop breathing death. An eternal separation from God forever death. It is sin that stands between us and the Lord. Isaiah 59 verse 2, it tells us that. Our sin separates us from God. It keeps us from the Lord. Our sin, it, it is a sin that blinds us from righteousness and holiness in our lives. It's sin that is destroying the life of every lost person. Uh, sin is something that, you've heard me say this before, uh, Johnny Hunt says it all the time. It's actually in a song. But sin will take you where you never thought you'd go. It'll keep you longer than you'd ever thought you'd stay. And sin will cost you more than you ever thought you'd pay. Sin is not something you can control, and it will ravage your life. But Christ came. I like what the old preacher said about it. Uh, I couldn't find this guy's name. It just said he was an older preacher. Listen to what he said about it. It is sin that will use you up, wear you out, leave you empty, damned and doomed. 
Sin is your problem. It is the problem of every human on the planet. It is from sin that you need to be delivered. The only way that you can be delivered from sin, the penalty, the cost, the judgment, the wrath of God, is to place your life in Christ Jesus. I asked the Muslim guy, I said, brother, I said, my heart is breaking for you. I said, because if you do wrong, you just said that if you do some things right, God may or may not accept it. I said, so where you stand right now, you don't know if you're going to spend eternity in heaven. And he, he shrugged his shoulders and he says, only God knows. And I went, man, I said, I stand before you right now knowing where I'll spend eternity. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with what he did on the cross. He paid the penalty for my sin. When Jesus took his last breath and he exhaled, he said, it is finished. In the Greek, that is perfect tense. All sin of the past, all sin of that day, and all sin that would ever be committed was dealt with on the cross. The penalty, the sting has been taken care of. And we can be victorious in Christ Jesus. It is the reason he came to this world. It's the reason he lived. It's the reason he died. And it's to give you and I hope in what he has done on the cross. I want to read to you from Romans uh, chapter 6 real quick. The hope that is found in Christ Jesus. Listen to what he says here. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin so that grace may increase? Oh, may it never be. How shall we who died to sin still live in it? Or do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus and have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised up from the dead through the glory of the Father, so too might walk in the new, so we too may walk in the newness of life. For if we have become united in him, in in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. What is he saying? Look, as believers, we died with Christ, we were buried with Christ, and praise the Lord, we're going to rise again as Christ did. Uh, That is the hope. We talked about this last, last week. The, the, the first fruits of the victory, or the first fruits of, 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 of death was Christ, and that means there's more to come. That's you, and that is me. Jesus gave us victory through his shed blood. I found another guy that said this. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, sin will bind you, blind you, and grind you. It will bind you, it will blind you, and it will grind you. But the rest of 623, the wages of sin is death, Listen to the rest of 23. For the wages of sin is death. On the count of three, let's say but together. Uh, One, two, three. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death, but, but the free gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. He gives us victory over damnation. We don't say those words anymore. I've gotten to where I'm starting to read a lot of the Puritan writers, older writers. I love the way they talk. I wish we still talked like that. Oh, if you say hell and damnation, you're just preaching fire and brimstone. I think that's the reason that the church has gotten as soft as it is today is because we don't speak the truth of hell as much as we preach this great place called heaven. Listen, it's one or the other. There's no fence riding. You are either going to spend eternity in heaven with God or in hell separated for eternity. That is the victory of the cross and the empty tomb. Man, God is so good. God has blessed me and allowed me to be at this church for long, so long. I can't even preach anymore. I'm sitting about there looking at these young men that I've watched grow up. Andy, I don't even know when you showed up, but I saw Jackson earlier. But I sit here and I look at kids that are not kids anymore. They're young adults. And you and I, in my generation, in a generation that's even older than me, listen, we have a job to do. And teaching and preaching the truth of the gospel to these generations that are coming up behind us. And not to give up on them. 
There's victory over sin. There's victory over death. But it's more than just being saved so that I can spend eternity in heaven with Him. Listen, if you're lost here today, the wrath of Almighty God is upon your life. That's scary. And only Christ is the answer. When the Bible speaks of death, it's not referring to just stop breathing. I preached a funeral of a lady who stopped breathing. Her physical body, her temporary body stopped. It ended, but her soul will remain for eternity. So will everybody else's. The question is, where will it be for eternity? Will it be an eternal life or will it be an eternal death? That's the question. That's what Pilate asks. What is truth? Truth is... When you stop breathing, you better be found in Christ Jesus. Because death is not just talking about stop breathing. It is talking about what happens to the sinner or what happens to the believer after death. Everyone who leaves this world without Christ will go to an awful place. The psalmist in Psalm 9 calls it Sheol, but it means hell. It will be an eternal destination for those without Christ. No one wants to think about dying lost or going to hell, but it is a reality nonetheless that's the that's that that, that's what changed everything yesterday in preaching that funeral was here was a lady who had stopped breathing her temporary body that temporary shell that temporary tent had given it up her lungs could not draw enough oxygen to support her body that's she had some kind of a lung disease that she couldn't walk from from me really he said two steps and she was out of breath Your temporary body, my temporary body is going to give up. The Hebrew writer says, once is appointed all men to die and then judgment. But it doesn't have to be a sad thing. There was a lady that was sitting over the back corner and she stood up and she said, Preacher, I just want to tell you, I know you didn't know Miss Jimmy, but man, she was a go-getter. She was on fire. But Jesus changed everything about the fire that she went and got stuff with. And I thought, man, that's powerful. That's how I want people to view my life when it's over. That's how I want people to view your life when it's over. You know, I knew him before Christ. Oh, I knew her before Christ. But man, when they met the Lord, everything they did was with fire and with excitement. And it was for His glory. I praise the Lord this morning that because of the hope of Christ and what He's done on the cross, that we have a hope of eternity to be able to spend it with God, not separated from Him for eternity. Bow your heads with me this morning. I want to ask you this morning, I'm not going to call you out, I'm not going to embarrass you, I just want to pray for you. But if you're sitting here this morning and, and you do not know where you would spend eternity, you would say, Preacher, I, I, I've heard the Gospel, but I don't really know if I know Jesus as my personal Savior. I would say to you, I, 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 I want to pray to you, for you, but then I hope that you would not leave without coming and seeing me, that I could open the Word of God and show you what it says about salvation. So if you're here this morning and you're, you know, preacher, I, I don't know Jesus, would you, would you slip your hand up that I may pray for you? If you're here this morning and you know Christ is your Savior, but you've not been living in the victory of an empty tomb. You would say, Preacher, will you just lift me up that I would be more on fire for Jesus? Will you just slip your hand up that I could pray for you? Amen. Amen, I see you. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, again, we give thanks for this beautiful morning. God, I pray that you would remind us that there was many that laid their head down last night and did not wake up this morning. But for whatever reason, you've given us another day. God, I pray that we live it in your truth. God, I pray that you would have your way in us and through us. God, I pray that everyone here, Lord, would call upon the name of Jesus. Our hope over the, for the victory over sin and over death. That because of what you've done for us and now that we are found in you, we too can write and say on our lives, as Paul did, O oh, death. Where is your victory? Oh, sin, where is your sting? God, you're good. We thank you for your love. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen, amen.